I think growing up in Sun Valley, they first introduced um, like a 13 foot half pipe when I was a young guy coming up. I was like 12 years old and we didn't have a terrain park. So the, the half pipe was the first thing I started doing freestyle stuff in. And I just really enjoyed it. I, you know, growing up with the Sun Valley Ski Education Foundation, we did a lot of training with school and then the team on the side. So it's just something I got into at an early age. I kind of found a passion for it and it just kind of stuck with me, I guess. You know, fast forward all these years later, I'm still on the U.S. snowboard team and, you know, I'm charging the half pipe. The progression of my run and the tricks that I've been doing is has been a process, you know, over the last four years. And we look back at last year and it it was a evolution of some of the tricks and maneuvers I've been working on. But I feel like everything's kind of coming together and I'm I'm feeling stronger than ever right now. You know, time will tell when we when these events roll around. If we look at the progression of half pipe riding. It's trending towards these double cork 1260s and 1440s and we take a step back a few years where it was just pretty much double cork 10s is what we needed. And so I kind of have been growing up with like the standard of double 10s where it was what it took to get on the podium, but it seems like that's not quite going to take it these days and everyone's really pushing the bar and we look at Scotty and Uto and some of these guys really pushing the envelope and they're all doing 1260s and 1440s so some of those tricks have definitely been in my mind for what I want to accomplish and learn in the future. And luckily I do have a front 12 in the bag, cab 12 and you know style as well. It's, it's a balance of both pushing the technicality as well as amplitude and style so the winner is just going to have a mix of both. Am I ever scared? Yeah, it's it's always kind of nerve-wracking dropping into the half pipe. I mean, it's gnarly. It's just a wall of ice and we're just chucking ourselves out of the lip and just looking for the landing, hoping we get back to our feet. But it's a very calculated risk in my mind. You know, we try to take the right steps to avoid injury. And with the practice of that, it can be pretty safe, I think. We got the Olympics coming up in February, so it's gonna be a big year. I'm looking forward to our Olympic qualifying events with the goal of making the US Olympic team. We have three Olympic qualifiers with the US snowboard team, and then there's kind of a bonus event being in locks, which goes into the world snowboard points list. So technically there's kind of four events coming up that can get you into the games. Well, I hope I do really well at these Olympic qualifying events. You know, it really just comes down to performance and execution, and I look forward to, you know, doing my best and trying to land some runs. And I believe if I can perform the way I want to, I should be able to solidify a spot. Being on the US snowboard team, it's very competitive to make the half pipe Olympic team just because the amount of talent that we have with our organization and, and we look at the list of people and there's close to 15 ripping snowboarders all gunning for a spot on the team which ends up only being four riders so you know I look at some of these rookies and some of the older guys with some of the experience and it's going to be very challenging for anybody to make the team. First event coming up for the Olympic qualifying is in Copper Mountain at the Grand Prix there. And that's been a destination that I've been growing up going to. And, you know, over the years I have had some good results. So it feels like close to home going there. So I'm looking forward to getting back there and, you know, doing what we can to put some runs down.